Hey, it's Biddy Penny. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing great today. We are going to do a trend, a brand new trend, but we're going to use up some 6x6 paper, which is already in your stash. Um, you can use up some ephemera. You can make your own ephemera, which I'm going to show you here today, a little bit of both of those. This is an old paper pad from Stampin' Up. I need some birthday cards. So I donate tons of cards and I have been asked for some birthday cards for kids. So that's what I'm going to do today is make a bunch of birthday cards for kids. I am going to show y'all too um, some that aren't kid oriented, but really these could be for anyone. I have this So Punny set from Doodlebug that we'll use today too, and I have the ephemera for that. I have this My Mind's Eye Splendor pad, and I'm not using it. I'll show it to you, but I am not using this. This is like my one of my favorite paper pads of all time, and I just can't cut it up yet. So we'll just look at that. All right. So let's kind of just jump into this. I pulled a couple of stamp sets and I'm gonna show you real quick how we're gonna make our card bases. So the paper here on the right is non-directional. So you can use that and you don't have to worry about which way you're cutting your paper. But essentially for your card base, you're gonna want a five and a half by six inch piece of paper. So with your six by six paper pads, all you're having to do is cut off half an inch. And of course you could use that strip that you cut off on the inside of your card for a little added decoration or whatever. So that's the only um, trimming that I'm making today. I cut mine at three by five and a half is the folded card base because I want it to easily fit in an A2 size envelope. Okay, these papers are double-sided, but they're directional. So I cut them down to um, five and a half by three inches. So you'll essentially get two card fronts out of each sheet of paper like this one. So I cut it down to five and a half, then I cut it by three, bang, you have two card fronts. I just love this paper so much. It's from the Not Too Shabby Shop. And um, I just, that glitter drip on those cakes is just amazing. I used to be a professional cake decorator and chocolate drips were all the thing, all the craze back then. So that just takes me back. Being a cake decorator was one of my favorite jobs of all time. Okay, so here, I am going to score at the three inch mark on the six inch side of the paper. Okay, so the paper is, looks almost square, so you have to look and see, as even as I'm lining it up on my scoreboard, I have to double check and make sure that I'm scoring on the six inch line and not the five and a half. Otherwise, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have the base you want. So you guys probably know by now, if you've been with me for a while, that I like to use double-sided paper as my card bases. It just immediately adds flair to the inside of your card. All right, I slowed this down because I wanted you to see. If you use a directional paper, the back side of your card base is going to be upside down. So this is why when you have directional paper, you really need to chop it in half and just make it a card front and put it on a card base. So I just wanted to slow that down and show you that so all of these here that I'm pulling from the doodle bug pad will have to be cut in half so that they can be a card front and not a card base, even though they're double sided. This little paper pad is just so fantastic. I liked it because it was something for everyone. I thought that was so smart on doodle bugs part to have so much variety in one paper pad. Like this one I'm gonna be using for get well cards. And then, you know, this of course is just a fantastic birthday card. There's dinosaurs, it's just so cool. 
really good, really good one. All right, I have um, some stamps that I pulled out because I want to make some of my own ephemera too. And I'm using my Stamparatus. Now this is my favorite stamp positioning tool because the lid here can go either way. So I like to have it turned this way so that I'm gonna show you guys, I can get the most out of one sheet of paper. So as long as I position my stamps, I'm gonna show y'all here right now, at a diagonal, and I go from the top left to the bottom right corner. If I go at that diagonal, I can get the most out of my paper. And with this paper, I'm using the really thick Nina paper because I'm making my own ephemera and I want thick, sturdy ephemera. So um, I wanna get the most out of that paper because it is pricey. <laughs> Now I have since replaced my Nina paper. I'm not buying any more of it to be completely honest. I'm only gonna be buying the accent paper going forward, but I do have a $50 ream of that Nina paper that I'm going to use up that I bought a couple of years ago. But luckily there is a cheaper alternative and you can't even tell the difference. So definitely explore that. It's a hundred pound accent, opaque white, I think it's wonderful. All right, so now I have all my ephemera cut out and I did have to go in. I love my Micron pens because if I don't get a great stamp, I can image, I can go in and, and finish it up and not just throw it out. Okay, so I made 20 cards. I'm not going to show you that today because I know your time is valuable and there's lots of card making videos to watch. So I'm just going to show you a few. Um, I am using my tissue paper. I've been using it all month since I got my last paper pumpkin from Stampin' Up. And I almost have used the entire sheet. But I'm, I'm trying to see if I can use an entire sheet of tissue paper and how many cards that takes. <laughs> I just like the dimension. Okay, I have this random stack of colored paper from Tuesday morning from when I first started card making. And it has just been stashed away in my closet. I brought it out. I'm going to try to use it up. By the way, totally off subject, but I went to Tuesday morning the other day. And guys, the prices are outrageous now. <laughs> I think I'm done shopping at Tuesday morning, which is probably a good thing. Um, but their paper collections were $14.99 each. I almost took a picture. I did a tiny haul, and I'll show you all that next week, but it was just insane. I was just like, I can just buy current paper that's not discontinued at the same price. I don't get it. I don't know what they're thinking, um, but whatever. So a little PSA announcement. Um, Tuesday morning is no longer discounted on their paper crafting stuff that I found. Everything has been marked up. All right, so I'm layering up my tissue paper and I brought in that Stampin' Up! punch. I just wanted one more layer back there. And then um, I'm going to adhere that down and then I'm gonna pop up my little ephemera piece and then I had made these little sentiment strips. So I'll glue one of those down and again, I'm keeping these simple because I know they need like 50 cards for these kiddos. So I've got to, you know, keep it moving. All right. And I had just put a simple white piece of paper on the inside of that card base for them to write a sentiment. All right. Let's use some of the sweet paper. Now, these aren't necessarily kiddish these next few designs but they would certainly work for a kid um, I am going to bring in the sentiment from the sprinkled with love stamp set this is from the not too shabby shop and I just love the stamp set it's got a cupcake and chocolate chip cookies and just so much cuteness a heart cookie and great sentiments and I really love the font so it is definitely 
I've used it five or six times at least since I got it for Valentine's Day. So it's definitely a staple for my collection. I had these leftover ephemera pieces and this was like almost all I had left over from my Valentine's kit. And so I'm gonna bring those in. I did stamp up some images, but I didn't color them. So I'm just gonna use, like this is a sticker so Jamie released some ephemera that's just like standard ephemera, and then she released some that are stickers. So I'm just gonna stick this on with my sentiment and one of the scrap pieces of paper. And that's it. Such a simple card design, but super cute. And I love this one. This one with the sprinkles and then the paper with the glitter icing coming down the cake is just so cute. All right, this is my glue dots tape runner and I do really like it. And one thing I really like about it is like for this paper, I wasn't, it wasn't gluing down for whatever reason. Um, I can roll the tape back and still use the tape that didn't catch. Whereas if you use like an ATG or other gun, uh, tape dispensers, I've always found that like if it messes up, that tape's just gone. But I like that this one, you can actually roll it back and still use that tape, if that makes sense. I hope it does. <laughs> so you don't have unused tape stuck on your roll that you can't use. And I just like that. I like being able to use everything, right? So this is the same design. This is just one of the ephemera pieces. And so I taped it down. Cute, cute. All right, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the doodle bug. This one was sweet. This is the one with all the candy and it has like, on the paper it has the gumball machines and suckers and jelly beans and Lots of junky candy that tastes good. <laughs> and so I um, wanted to use the ephemera and just pop these up. And I like the dimension and the simplicity. It's really very easy, simple design. I'm sure it'll make a kid happy. It would make my daughter happy. She's such a sweet tooth. Oh my goodness, that girl. I have to really monitor her, her <laughs> and her sugar intake. She'll try to be sneaky. All right, for the inside, I'm just gonna stamp a sentiment that says happy birthday. And then I had left a couple of those jelly beans out because I knew I could just decorate the inside of my card. I got a little too much glue on one, so I just share it with the other one and it all works out. Super cute. So I made a whole bunch of doodle bug. I actually made, like I said before, 20 cards. So at the end of this video, you're gonna get to see all 20 cards. I just, um, it was gonna be too long if I showed you all 20 cards. <laughs> I have a little bit of a tape problem there. All right, so again, this is just very similar to the last one with all the candy. I um, popped up my little rocket ship and I popped up my planet and I'm gluing down my stars and that's it. So when I have a bunch of pieces I wanna glue, I flip them all over, I put glue on all of them and then I stick them all to my paper. So these are like mass making tips. Um, just like with the session when I need to make 20 or 50 cards, little tips like that, like put glue on all your pieces of, of ephemera at once really saves a lot of time. All right, I believe these are the last two I'm gonna show y'all today. And these I am just making, um, they're not as kiddish. These would definitely work for um, adult friends and I am using up ephemera. This is from the carousel collection from Maggie Holmes and it's on that Stampin' Up! paper. 
I thought they went well together. And I just love that little ice cream cart. Isn't that adorable? I would love to have a die like that. That size and everything is just precious. So here we are finishing it up. I am going to finish up this roll of metallic thread. And I'm going to just lay it here kind of how I want it. Put tape on the back of my ice cream cart and then stick it down to catch it. I'm getting a call. Luckily, my phone's on vibrate, but sorry if y'all can hear that. It is what it is. Okay. Again, same technique. I'm putting glue on all my ephemera at once or tape and then sticking them down. And I decided to pop this banner up. You know, if you're just layering a bunch of ephemera, I really have found that popping pieces up and, and injecting some dimension really takes the card to the next level. For me anyways, that's how I feel. Um, I really feel like it just adds a lot. And it doesn't feel like you just glued a bunch of stuff to a card base, if that makes sense. And you might not agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. This is the foam tape from Doris. Um, it's nice for little projects like this. All right, that is those two cards. So here's everything I made. It's quite a bit. I still need to have like one or two more sessions. Look at this little cutie. I just love him. And guys, you notice like I'm not coloring up these images. I find that black and white images, stamped images work just fine if you're dealing with a lot of patterned paper. You don't have to color everything, which for me saves me a lot of time when I'm mass producing like this. And I just think it's so cute and they really stand out. It's, you know, it might not be the look that you would wanna go for, but for me, it totally works. It's very, to me, it's very modern. And I like that. And then here are these. So, you know, it really doesn't take that long to make these from one six by six paper pad, you know, depending on the paper pad, they're usually anywhere from 24 to 48 sheets of paper. The Stampin' Up! ones are 48 sheets. So you could have... 48 cards in a flash and it would be so fun so I need to make some more for Dell's Children's Hospital and I'm definitely going to use this method and um, probably just a whole bunch of doodle bug and I'm going to make some happy cards for all the kids at Dell's now these, I still need to go back and add some get well sentiments. I have some in my stash. I just need to add them to it. But this is what I had accomplished for that day. So let me know what you guys think about this down below. It really is fun. It is a great way to use up your six by six paper pads, your leftover ephemera. And I think it's a fun design. I wasn't sold at first, but now I totally am. I'm on board to the mini slimline trend. <laughs> Let me know which ones are your favorite. I hope this inspires you to get in your craft room and use up some of your supplies and have lots of fun. I hope you have a really great day. I'm so glad you guys are here. If you liked the video, please hit that like button. It really helps my channel grow the more likes I get um, per video. I'm learning and um, you know if you haven't subscribed yet I hope you will you'll see all kinds of things on my channel there's a lot of variety 
And so if that's appealing to you, definitely hit that subscribe button. And for all of my subscribers, I'm so grateful for you guys. I have been getting to know Jacqueline and Heather and of course, Susan and all of these wonderful people in the comments down below. So leave me a comment so we can get to know each other. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.